If you haven't had this number for 18 months, <laughs> it's really good to see you. I trust that <clears throat> the Lord will bless every one of you. Amen. Shall we just open in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are our God. We thank you, Lord, that you have made such great provision for each one of us. And Father, as we come before you this evening, we pray that your blessing will be upon everyone. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, the band is going to lead us now in a time of worship. Shall we stand and sing, Light to the world, you step down into darkness. Amen.
Father, who knows us with to be true. How great is our God. Father, you are indeed. And Father, we come here tonight, Lord, to praise you and to glorify you and to give you all the praise and honour. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you've done for us and everything that you continue to do for us. And we thank you and we praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
six o'clock next Sunday is our evening service. It's a Thanksgiving service for Harvest and it's going to be live streamed on Church Facebook, live here and on YouTube later. One more. Cleaning. We need a new team of volunteers under 70 years of old. If you were able and willing to be one of the cleaners, please see one of the leadership team. Future activities, advance notice Sunday the 17th of October is our anniversary service. It's our 17th anniversary and that's at 6 p.m. here. Can we have the prayer topic, Sky, please? We are asked to pray for Angela, Pastor Vasil Blanca, Rob, and Kat Silman. You, many of you will know Pastor Vasil Blanca. We all know Rob and Kat. And we all know Andy Ron, but they are all in need of our prayers. So I'm going to leave it open for five minutes. Is there anyone here that would like to pray? Father, we ask you to heal these people, Lord. We know that you can do things that doctors can't do. <coughs> And Father, we know that a touch from you, anything is possible, Lord. So Lord, we think of their families at this time now, Lord, and we think of them, Lord, and the professionals that are working with them, Father. We thank you for them all, Father, in the precious name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Father, we just ask now, Father, in Jesus' name, Father, that you will comfort them at this time in need. Father, only you can do that, Father. I would just pray for the prayer that's sick in the church as well, Father, that you have drawn near to them, Father. This I ask, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, where else can we go when we have people who are in such dire straits? Mm. And Lord, we want to lift them up to you, Lord. For Anne Gillard in a hospital bed in Neville Hall at the moment. With her husband and son with her. And Father, we know that the expectations from the hospital are that Anne will not live for long. But Father, we believe in miracles, Lord. We believe that we have a God that can heal people. Yes. And we lift it up to you again tonight, Lord. And we pray that you would intervene we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch that body and that you would bring it to full life again. Mm -hmm. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 For Vasil, we pray, Lord, that you'll do a miracle in his life. Amen. Father, we pray that you would draw close to him. He's been a faithful servant of yours for many years and we pray that you would heal him in Jesus name Amen. and Father we pray for Rob and Cass yes. Cass mum passed away on, on Tuesday and Lord we just <coughs> pray that they might find comfort from you 
the God of all comfort. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help them to cope at this time. Lord, that you would bless them in their mourning. Again, we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you come to read from God's Word. The reading tonight is from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 24. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms round his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best straw and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sand it on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steele. I'm going to ask Gareth to come now and share the message tonight. And I would just like to pray for Gareth before he comes. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we lift up Gareth to you now. We pray, uh, Lord, that you would bless him uh, as he delivers the message you have laid on his heart. And Father, we pray for every person here who is listening uh, this evening and for everyone who is listening online, Lord. We pray that this word will mean something real from you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that it will be a message that will bless everyone who hears it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. It is good to be back and to see faces instead of a kind of a Zoom meeting where people are miles away in little squares. But it's good to be here, good to be speaking to you. I don't know whether it's because Susan's getting older, or and me, I should mention that, but we spend quite a lot of time recently talking about parents and grandparents and, and all kinds of things like that. And we worked out that if my father had still been alive, he'd have been a hundred at the beginning of December. And I began to think about my dad, and, and this story came to me. I had a cousin who lived in the, on the outskirts of London. Plenty of money, really nice guy, and was great to the family. And every summer, before we were married, uh, even, we would go up to London and he'd book a posh meal in a posh restaurant. I'd been thrown out of better car parks than most of you have. I'll tell you that story again. And we used to go to the theatre. Well, this particular year, Rachel had been born. She was six weeks old, and we still decided we'd go up to London. So my mother and father went on ahead a couple of days before, and so I and Rachel, this old, in a carry cot, as we used to take them then, in, on the back seat of the car, 
on the roof rack a pram and in the pram the wheels because you've got to take the wheels off and in, on top of that again was the baby bar. So we left on our way to London before mobile phones and so we had a system where when we got off the motorway at Junction 3 we'd find a phone box, we'd ring ahead and say Dad, we just left the motorway, we'll be with you in about an hour but that was an hour that could have been two or could have been even more I'm sure many of you were familiar with the London traffic so we stopped and we rang him, we told him about an hour and my mother took up the story she said when the phone rang he began to move about a bit edgy and mum said he was walking to the window remember we'd said we were an hour away he walked to the window and looked up and looked down the road sat down five minutes later he back up looking up the road looking down the road an hour later we still hadn't arrived he'd had enough down the steps out through the front door walked up and down the pavement on the main road just waiting for us to come. Our welcoming committee, somebody who was there waiting for us. Eventually we did turn up and all he was concerned about was taking Rachel out of the back of the car. He wasn't interested in helping to take the pram off the back and put the wheels on and get the, none of that. He was just the granddaughter, the first granddaughter. Uh, and everywhere he went, he told people about her and, you know, it was difficult for us to understand, perhaps, until we had grandchildren. And Susan and my father could have come out of the same pond because they leave London and she's waiting for them to arrive on the back of the house. But on a good day, that's three hours. And she sits in a chair where she can look up and down the garden. Then she opens the door, goes up the steps to make sure there's nothing in the way that the children could fall over. And we go through all this. Another welcoming committee somebody who was waiting for us everywhere we went and i'm sure that you have similar experiences of going places and people waiting for you to come and i read the story of the prodigal son again and saw something a little different from what i'd seen previously i mean everybody almost everybody many people would know the story of the prodigal son. The younger of a farmer's two boys decided that he'd had enough of farming. Now whether the merchants that passed the door selling things had told him stories about life in the city, I have no idea. But I will tell this story with a little poetic license, if you'll excuse me. So these, they come along and they tell him about the things that are happening in the city the dances and the parties and the posh houses and so he decides he wants to go so he goes speaks to his dad and said dad how much is this farm worth he said oh about two million quid and he said well can i have my half and he said yes when when i pass away it'll be divided equally between you and your brother no i i don't want to wait till then i've got something that i desperately need to do and i'd like the money now and we're told that the father did whatever was necessary and gave his son, his younger son, half the cost of the farm. The boy goes, he goes to the city and I guess like many young people, for example, when they go to university, the freedom, unbelievably, we've got to come in by 10 o'clock or get in trouble. Do you want to stay out at 3 o'clock the following morning or even 6 o'clock the following morning? You can do it. And he was having a great time. Plenty of money, throwing parties, all kinds of things. And of course, one day he goes to put his card in the machine, except they wouldn't have had him. He put his card in the machine to find out that he comes back out and says, there's nothing there. Can't believe it. All the money that he brought from his father. And he'd only had a couple of parties, but of course, a couple of parties turned out to be more than a couple when he sat down and counted it. And then there's a, a verse in there which says, He came to his senses. He came to his senses. He realised that those things he'd been investing in were just a way of taking his money. That the enjoyment was short-lived. When he woke up the following morning with a head so thick that he didn't know what day it was, 
He'd lost all the enjoyment that he'd had the night before. He'd forgotten all about that. But of course, he wasn't really particularly bothered at the beginning because all of these friends that he'd made while he was throwing these parties, while he was taking them places, while he was paying for their shopping and helping them out with their rent, these were obviously going to be people that were going to help him. But they didn't want to know, I'm really sorry, I just got married. And my wife, I, I, I just can't afford to lend you any money if she finds out. And all kinds of excuses. I'm really sorry, but I've had a large bill come in and I've had to pay it. And he knocks on doors where he's sure people will help. And of course, nobody does. Now, what's his alternative? Well, the first thing he thinks of is, I get a job. So the Bible says that he got a job doing the worst thing that any Jew could ever imagine, working with pigs and feeding pigs. Now the story that Sue read to us tells us that it almost got to the point where he was eating the food that, that he was feeding the pigs with. And then he came to his senses. And he realized that if he went back home, that if he went to his dad, and asked his forgiveness and apologized for the stupid way in which he led his life, that at the very least his father would allow him to work there and to be a servant on his father's farm. He'd be guaranteed three meals a day, he'd have a roof over his head, which was ten times better than the situation he was facing in the city. So he decides that's what he's going to do. And he went back. And what he didn't know was that every morning his father was climbing poetic license, was climbing to the roof of the house and was looking up the main road that led to the city, hoping, praying that one day he'd see his son coming down. Just as my dad was standing and pacing up and down, waiting for Rachel, waiting for us to come, Rachel's welcoming committee, just as we, or Susan, sits in the window waiting for the girls to come. This father was waiting for his son to come. He believed that one day his son would return. And when his son got nearer, his father ran to him, the story tells us, and put the best of clothes, put a ring, do a party for him. The son wasn't expecting any of that. The best he could hope for was that he'd be able to work for his father. But that wasn't what his father ever intended. And of course, it was a, a, a parable that Jesus told. And we know that parables are defined as earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And the Father represented God, and the Son are us, or was us, or represents us. People who perhaps have gone away from God, have gone to the city, not actually, but figuratively gone away from the church, taking up something that, that's not <coughs> God-honoring, doing things that God wouldn't be pleased with, and uh, and he's there waiting for anybody and everybody who are prepared to come back. And all God is looking for is, I'm sorry, all God is looking for is repentance, posh word, asking forgiveness. I'm sorry I used all your money. I'm sorry I wasted it. And God, all God wants from us to, to, to redeem us, to give us a place in heaven is for us to forgive our, ask him to forgive our sins. And God guarantees that anybody who asks for forgiveness will be forgiven. The Bible tells us that. And you know the good news is heaven's not full yet. There's still room for people today, this week, because until Jesus returns, there's going to be room. It's not full. It'll never be full until the day Jesus returns. So the challenge, I guess, to all of us is 
to remember that God is waiting for us. If there are things we need forgiveness for, God is there waiting for us. Romans 10, 9 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not maybe, not perhaps, but you will be saved. My dad was standing there waiting for us. We sit in the house waiting for the girls to come. And everybody has faced that type of situation. This dad was sitting on, standing on the roof of the house, looking down the road, waiting for his child to come. The Bible tells us God's like that. He's standing and waiting and praying for each and every one of us because one day heaven will be full and the challenge is if you're not in God's army if you're not one of God's gang then there's still room and all we have to do is to ask him and confess our sins and the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive our sins no question about it he will it's a guarantee God bless you Thank you, Gary. I'm sure that that's a real message for everyone that's heard it tonight. The band are going to lead us in our closing hymn, our closing song. <coughs>
thank you and we praise you that you are the God who saves us. We thank you, Lord, that as the message we heard tonight, you were there waiting for us to come to you. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.